hasn't been thrilled with the red zone defense from y'all's football games. Just from your perspective, what do y'all need to do better down there to, to hold opponents to field goal? Um, I think uh, the biggest part is just communication from the whole defense. Everybody be on the same page. Uh, so we, we're moving as one unit um, instead of a bunch of individuals. And I think if we can all get on the same page and just communicate a lot better, then uh, that that will have a big part in it. With a uh, 7.30 kick, what's your day like on Saturday? What do you what do? you do? How do you get off the grid? When do you start to get locked in? Um, I haven't had a 7.30 kick since high school. So uh, it's going to be a new adjustment for me. But uh, I'm going to try to treat like the 6.30 kickoff that we had not too long ago and just go about my day. I'm um, just trying to stay locked in and lock out when I need to be able to lock in and zone in on the football aspect and then be able to zone out too so I'm not so locked in all day. When does that start? Probably when I wake up, uh, just being at breakfast with the guys, just talking, starting off with a good morning, just being able to, to start off on a good day. When did you know that Javon was going to be out and what did you Tell Davis before you guys took the field. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know he was going to be out. He took some snaps through the week. Uh, he looked. He looked pretty ready. I might know he was going to be out to like uh, warm ups. I saw him. He was moving around. He didn't feel too good. Uh, and then when I knew he was going to be out, I went over and told David, "Just be who you are. Um, you, you put all this work in to be here. Um, you wouldn't be playing today if you weren't ready to play. So I just told him just to be who you are. You don't have to be anything, be anybody special to be who you are." Um, you're a great player. Just have confidence in yourself, and everybody believes in you. So just go out there and do what everybody knows you can do. I know that Coach Smart was saying a lot at halftime to just stay poised, stay composed. What about amongst the DBs with Coach Brown and just amongst you guys? What was the communication like in the halftime line? Pretty much the same. Just take it one moment at a time, one one play, one snap at a time. I'll always be on the same page. Just try to communicate, um, move as one. Just that's pretty much it. And looking at it right here, Rattler was 16 of 18 for 152 yards in the second half, and then, or in the first half, in the second half, going to 6 of 24, just as a secondary. Just what kind of change for you all in that second half, and what clicked? I'd say it goes back to being, being, all being on the same page. Um, when we went to halftime, Coach Smart told us to take it one more at a time, and they got it. They have a very good offense. They have very good players, so we knew eventually they were going to hit a play. Um, it's just how we responded to them hitting a play. So in halftime, we all came in. Um, we all settled down, got on the same page, um, just realized who we are, really. Uh, we all just stuck together, and that's where that connection part comes in, just being able to lean on each other and have confidence in each other. What did you think of Dan's pick? <laughs> um, <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, just, I mean, just to see Dan go out there and just show everybody what he can do, um, him covering so much ground, because that was a lot of ground to cover on that pick. So just him being out there, and it was a long drive, so for him to make that play was huge so he can go out the field and put the offense back on the field. Malachi, you've been here a short time, but you've already seen a lot of really elite quarterback play. Where would you stack Rattler up with individually? And I know the team has a lot to do, but where would you stack Rattler up individually? And then if you could just talk about, um, you know, the difference, you know, between that South Carolina game last year and this year. I mean, just the striking in terms of how you guys play. Uh, he, he's definitely up there. Uh, very talented, very smart. Um, has an incredible arm. So uh, just to be able to play against him and know what he can do, uh, it's always a challenge um, that I look forward to. Um, I mean, like I say, he's a great quarterback, great leader of his team. So just being able to go out there and compete with him is awesome. And I'd say the difference uh, between this year and last year. Um, we just said we, we kind of got off to like a slow start both, on both sides. Uh, whereas last year, we just kind of came out the gate. Um, and that's uh, something that can easily be fixed. Nothing to worry about, nothing to panic. I have 100% confidence on both sides of the ball. So I say that's, that's probably it. Malachi, when we spoke to Coach Smart last week, he mentioned that watching your game against South Carolina last year, and then watching you now, he could tell that there was a little bit of nervousness on your freshman tape. I'm curious if you feel a difference in just obviously your confidence level, but did you think you were nervous at all last year? Um, I wouldn't say nervous. I'd say more of uh, just trying to get adjusted. Because um, I always had that confidence in myself that I could go out there and play with the best of the best. Um, if I couldn't, I wouldn't be here. So I always had that confidence. So just being able to, and it also plays into like me learning more about the defense and building that connection with guys. Because I came in last year with a whole new group of guys. I had no idea who they were. Um, so we created that bond. And this year, we're, I mean, we're so tight. We were last year too, but just 
having that confidence and knowing like my job and my assignment and other people's job has helped me just uh, relax more. Yeah, just what have you seen from Ra Ra Thomas in practice in recent weeks? It seems like he's getting more and more comfortable with this offense. Yeah, uh, he's he's one of our elite wide receivers. Um, I mean, what he does is it's amazing. Um, he's very competitive. He can go up and get the ball. Uh, so just to see him get better week by week, day by day, um, and him being able to showcase his talents, I mean, it's just it's just awesome to see because I see him put in the work every day throughout the week. So just him being able to go out there and just show what he can do. Correct me if I'm wrong. You were roommates with Jalen your freshman year, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do right. you have any good stories from him that we uh, you could tell, you could share with us, <laughs> and uh, just from your vantage point, of how is he just progressed and growing that in that spot right in front of you on the field? Uh, I knew Jalen. Um, before we got here, um, we had we got hooked up before we got here, so I had met him and we ended up being roommates. And uh, he, uh, it was his birthday uh, <laughs> um, during dog time, so we had a team run at uh, six in the morning, I think. So um, I remember he went. We both went to sleep early because we were freshmen. We didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, I woke up like at five, five o'clock maybe, and I just was blasting music. I went and banged on his door. Uh, want to give him a good start to his birthday day. Uh, I mean, but just to see the things that he can do. I mean, get off the ball, rush. What he does is um, amazing. He's only getting better. He's only going to keep getting better. Um, he's with some of the very elite guys in that room and the coaches as well. So just to see him improve day by day, just like um, everybody else. I mean, it's just this is awesome. Hi, UAB had a disappointing game this weekend, losing to Louisiana 21-41. How do you deal with a team that may feel like they have something to prove? Um, I'd say it's just still focus on us. I mean, they have a very good team. Um, I'm pretty sure they're not satisfied with how they played last Saturday. Um, so we really just got to hone in on us and just focus on what we need to focus on, um, knowing that they're, uh, they have a very good team and they're going to have something to prove, but so are we. So just kind of being on our being on our toes and just staying focused. Well, uh, Kirby talks, and we talk to a lot of players, you know, the skull sessions and their why, but just kind of simply what's your why and what, you know, kind of how are you to do what you do on Saturdays? Um, I say uh, skull sessions play like a very huge part um, in what we do here. I, th I take it very seriously. I think everybody else does, and I think that's what makes us a little different. Um, uh, my why would be uh, when I was little, when I was seven, my uh, my cousin, he was like my brother, he had, um, he had passed away when he was nine, and he, uh, I started playing football before him, and when he started playing football, he started wearing 24, and I switched because I was like, I don't want you wearing the same number as me. I don't want to, I don't want you copying me. Um, and when he passed away, I switched back to 24. So um, that's why I wear 24. Um, most people just look at it as a number, but to me, it's, it's much more. Um, I know if I take care of what I need to take care of, I know his name will forever live on, and um, that's just huge to me. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the plan safety on most downs and then third and long when y'all go into dime. You're kind of a dime defender, you're a nickel defender. What's the key to being multiple here at the University of Georgia and where were you comfortable schematically to be able to handle the multiple jobs? Mm -hmm. um, I said just being able to move around um, only helps the team out. You know, uh, when I first got here, they put me in different positions and we rotate a lot during practice. Uh, me, Taki, Bull, David, Dan, we all rotate. So just being able to play those positions and just having taking those reps in practice, um, the amount of reps you get builds your confidence. And also going against the guys that I go against every day um, helps me with my confidence. So um, I'd say uh, kind of always always knew I could do it. Um, I'm just very uh, blessed to be in that position where we can all move around and be in different spots. Time for two more questions. Do you mind sharing your uh, cousin's name and? Uh how old were you at that time, and, and what happened to him? Uh, Keon. Um, his name is Keon, and I was seven. He was nine, and uh, he got uh, he got shot when he was nine. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, you talked a little bit about facing Ra Ra in practice, and I just also wanted to ask about Dom and, and facing him in practice, and especially having to face him last year in, in a game scenario. Just talk me through kind of facing him last season in practice, and then now kind of seeing that on the field, uh, at least for Georgia now? Um, <laughs> me and Dylan go back and forth. Like, he's very competitive. Uh, so just him coming from Missouri, we always go back and forth. Um, he caught a ball on me when he was at Missouri, mm -hmm. so we, we joke a lot about it. But uh, just to see the things that he can do, because he's very elite at what he does. He's very quick. 
Um, agility is awesome. His hands uh, very aggressive uh, when the ball gets to him. So uh, just being able to compete against him in practice only makes us better um, individually and as a team. Um, and just like I said, he's one of those guys that comes in every day. And he works. So just to see, just to see what he's doing, um, showing it right what he can do, what he's always been able to do. It's just, um, it's just a great opportunity for him, and I'm, I'm very excited to see what he does next. Thank you, Malachi.